Hello, this is Haku Bean, and today we are going to be reading r slash entire parents. If you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get right into this. My mom is always pissed off and blames me for it. For about the past 8 or so months, my mom is always pissed off at everyone. Literally everyone. She's always yelling at my little brother, and especially me. My dad's not allowed to take custody of me at all. My parents are divorced because he was just doing tons of hardcore drugs and drinking after 14 years of being sober. Every time I try to ask my mom why she's always mad, she just either starts yelling at me and saying it's my fault or just completely ignores me. I've asked her to take us to family therapy and she always says no. She finally told me why she's mad and she said it, it because of me. I have... Extremely bad anxiety and depression and couldn't get into school last year. My dad was in rehab, so he couldn't help. She said she's mad because I didn't go to school, had anxiety and depression, and my dad was gone. I try to tell her it's not my fault, and she just says it is. It's not your fault. She's always acting like a child as well. My little brother's only 10, and he shouldn't grow up around someone like this. She gaslights according to thinking she's a great mo- other, but she's not. She's screaming at my brother or, or if he's two minutes late to bed, forgets to brush his teeth, or even if he's u watching YouTube too loud. It's gone to the point where I'm scared to even ask her for a favor or help with anything. That might, found un that might sound dumb, but she just is. She's scary. I don't know what to do because she never stops yelling all day. And always seems pissed off. Refuses to take us family therapy. Refuses to understand what she's doing isn't right and blames everything she does on her 17 year old extremely depressed son. I'm way too broke to afford my own house and I turn 18 soon. Plus, I wouldn't feel right leaving my little brother with her. Your mother is a nightmare. And, yeah, it's not your fault. <sighs> feel horrible for OP. And we're going to see a lot of that in this. My parents and family think it's my responsibility to look after the whole house. I am 17 and live with my younger brother, 7. My stepdad and my mom last, last year around June, my mom was diagnosed with a chronic illness that affects her ability to breathe and many other things. Sarcoidosis, if you're interested. Yeah, I can't freaking pronounce it. Now, at the time, this was a big shock, and it took a lot of getting used to. I should look up how to pronounce that. Nah. My mother's illness required me to help out a lot more and drop seeing my friends or enjoying my own free time. I was going through a rough patch at this time, such as depression and severe iron deficiency, causing me to often be tired or, in some cases, lazy, leaving my room a mess and myself too. Despite my own problems, I realized that she was clearly in a worse state than I was, being bound to the couch or bed for hours a day, unable to work. While my mother was unable to work and my dad working full time, I took majority of household chores and a list of other things. This took a big toll on me. It led me to being tired physically and mentally as it took a lot of time and energy balancing out my exams. I ended up missing a lot of school and struggling to keep myself awake during the day. This routine carried on for a few months and I'd found myself trying weed more often to take the edge off.
This was around Christmas and my mom's tasks were becoming more common. However, she realized I was struggling, so I dropped a few of the drops, which helped a lot until January. At this time, she started to ask for more, as she had recently been diagnosed with two more autoimmune diseases and was at hospitals and doctor's appointments constantly, leaving me to look after the house. This also carried on for a while as I felt bad with her being my mom and as so I have a duty to carry out looking after her. However, around February, I let down on a job a bit as my nan had started helping out knowing there was a lot for or just me to do alone. This was once a, a week and she did cleaning and I tied it up. Around this time, many of my family had started calling me lazy and telling me I didn't put enough effort in or care for my mom. This did anger me, but I chose to ignore the comments being made as I, in all honesty, was at the time I'm due to depre the depression. I don't know, if I was doing all of the household chores for ages and then people were calling me lazy for taking a little bit of a break, I'd just say, you want to see lazy? Here's fucking lazy and just stop doing it altogether. Watch him see what lazy really is. However, this started to get worse when I was missing weeks of college at a time and staying in bed with a messy room all day. I mean, the house was not being kept tidy. I still did clean, etc. and did a lot for my mom, however, I usually still got complaints about how I'm lazy, which started to live in the back of my head. I had a lot. Eventually, I snapped out at everyone one day. I told them how I've done more than anyone in the family while juggling my exams so that I have no free time to hang out with friends or enjoy what I want. I spend most of my time inside, rotting in bed in case anything happens while I'm out. Fortunately, they did not take this well and ignored me. So sometimes if they think I'm so lazy and do nothing, I won't, and they can see what happens. And I did exactly that for a whole two weeks. I did nothing. I went out and did what I wanted. And this felt amazing. I felt a lot more free time and was relaxed. I'd stopped smoking and was focused on myself in those two weeks, which turned into four. After this time, they came to me and told me that they needed me to... Yeah, as the house was becoming sh ambles. However, if I wants to... Carry on ignoring it and doing a small amount. I was scared I'm wasting my teenage years. But it was just me and my mom until I was seven. So I feel as though I have a large responsibility to uphold. She seems to have this entire feel that all my time should be hers. And I just can't do that. Any advice is appreciated. Get out. Run away. These people are not appreciating your work and you are putting in way too much work. You have no obligation. To do anything. These are your parents. They should be helping you, not the other way around. They are not entitled to all your time. They are entitled to some household chores, sure. But they shouldn't be relying on you to keep the house from going into shambles. Parents should... would be helping you focus on your studies and your health issues. Anyway, you're working yourself to exhaustion and being called lazy by these people. And I'm quite sure you know exactly how many days until your 18th birthday. So as soon as that odd number hits zero, you should probably leave. After 18, you have no obligation to stay with these people that are treating you so horribly. Anyway, next story. Recently, I had a court date because my abusive entitled mom sued for visitation. We had recently went to court. My abusive mother was sued for visitation because I cut her out of my life back in October. Here's how it went. She lost the case. Then we giggle 
or when they wouldn't grant a recitation. She had the biggest meltdown outside the court. That's great. Anyway, let's get to the next story then. This one's a bit nasty. Ants are coming out of my mom's room. I, 24 female, feel like this is relevant to the subreddit, but let me know if it isn't. I just feel like venting. I am living with my parents in a city with a high cost of living and bad housing situation. It is a small two-bedroom apartment with one, and then and my, my dad graciously gave me the bedroom while my mom took over the master bedroom. This story is about my mom. I won't get into the bag of spiky worms that I was growing up with her as a mom. Guessing that's a metaphor and not literal. But I'll mention some things to give you an idea of who she is. When I was seven, I lived in a big house and always felt lonely because my mom would take long naps in her bedroom. She was slightly depressed, but after watching TV for hours, I'd jump in bed and nap with her, looking for uh, some affection. Well, this is one of my earliest memories. Most of the time, she would half awaken, realize it is me, and then proceed to tell me how she didn't want me, and how sorry she was that I was born. Ow. And throughout my life, she would escalate to screaming and guilt tripping me over every little thing. She lost her phone pretty much every day when I was in high school, well, for example, and after looking around the couch, she was dramatically sigh and mumbled to herself to ask her what I what's wrong. She would then ask me to help her look for her phone, and I usually would. If I ever said no, I'm in the middle of homework or can see I'm doing laundry, she would start complaining about how I'm a bad daughter who never helps her and who's selfish. Fine, she'll never help me out if I need it. Over a misplaced phone. Not to mention that asking her to do anything, including clean up her own spills or candy wrappers, was like pulling donkeys into a ditch. That... That's one I haven't heard, er, 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 heard before. She often makes herself out to be a better person than she actually is, and since she has a shrill voice and screamed nearly every day of my childhood, I now absolutely detest loud sound. I can relate with you there. Probably not for the same reason, so. Perhaps more relevant is her relationship to my dad. According to her, my dad cheated on her before I was born with a dirty woman, and she wanted to divorce him, but stayed for my brother and I. Which is BS because she probably just enjoyed spending his money in comfort. She often bragged about how she used to date doctors and lawyers, especially when it went through some financial trouble a few years back, and how she could be living better than she does now. I have a feeling she'd stay with him because he is somewhat of a pushover, who she verbally and sometimes physically abuses, and it's too late for a fresh start. Anyway, she's decided to constantly ask him to buy sweets for her, complain about her, her colleagues she began working again in recent years, and get ex upset if my dad doesn't understand the occupational jargon she uses. What the heck? Or really, that he can't read her mind. Oh, that's one of the worst things. If she does her laundry, she could... Would leave her clothes in the washer for hours before or he comes home and reminds her. Then she would tell him to do it for her. Yeah, I think that, uh, and I've heard of some people having a problem with um, switching over the, the laundry. Kind of why we got a kind of a thing that's actually both in one. It's a washer and dryer. Pretty handy for that. I was often the one to have to do it for her because I also needed to do my laundry. And she would say stuff like, why won't you help your mom out this once? But I saw speaking with her a year ago. She always had an explosive temper, a persecution complex, and narcissistic tendencies. And I'm still trying to manage my own personality problems. OCD and anxiety that arose from being raised to not speak up for myself 
and to deal with conflict poorly. But I've been doing what I can to pretend like she doesn't exist. That we've moved around on a lot at least eight times in my life. And almost every house we would I'd have a period of dealing with ants. In our last place, we were fine until she left a cup of soda or juice or juice. Well, I can't speak apparently. And the ants came in overnight. It seemed like I was the one who cared there were ants crawling around the dining table and eventually in our bathrooms, which only which continued for a few months. In our current apartment, we have been ant free for 10 months, which I'd been pleased by, but today I was. When I was doing my laundry, the laundry closet is right outside the master bedroom. I noticed a line of ants coming from my mom's room. The frustration. I know her room is pretty filthy. It's just from seeing her bring all her food from dinner to Indian food to cookies there to eat. And for what I know of her hygiene, I think someone who forgets to wash her hands after using the toilet and seizes in their hands. Now she is making it everyone else's problem because we have ants on loose and they may wander into my bedroom next. Thing is, ants should only go places where there is food to want. Mostly sugary stuff like sodas or, 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 or juices or whatever. I feel like she should have prevented this issue by doing the responsible thing and cleaning up after herself. It annoys me all the more because we had been doing good at keeping bugs at bay. But now she'll just yell at us if we get mad or tell her to clean up regularly. So we'll probably just give a disinterested, oh, okay, when my dad mentions the ants and expects us to do something about it. Which we will, but still her attitude never fails to irritate me. If you got this far, thanks for letting me rant. Of course. And all three people that made this far in the video are going to hear it too. Damn, that's gonna sound. I'm so oh, silly when and I learned that if this video gets more than three views. My parents don't like my boyfriend because he isn't rich. Oh, that sucks. I, 31 female, have been dating my boyfriend, 28 male, for four years, and we are moving in together in two weeks. I'm really excited as I have never taken this step before in a relationship. I've lived alone since I was 24. Hey, I'm 24. I've grown up very privileged, and I'm very grateful for everything my parents have provided to me. On the other hand, my boyfriend has grown up in a lower income household. My boyfriend has a full-time job managing a local coffee shop. He pays his bills and has never asked me for money. He's attempted secondary school, but hasn't been successful. He knows that his current gig isn't a forever thing. On the other hand, I am highly... He ambitious. I'm a manager at a, at a hospital with a pension plan and all that adult shit. I also waitress during the weekends to earn some extra money. On top of that, I dog sit, cat sit, it, dog walk for the doctors I work with as I'm cheaper than kennels and a huge animal lover. With all this extra income, I bought a piece of land, all cash, last year. Seems like you're kind of bragging about. Oh, out it, but I'm not I'm gonna complain. It's not really about. Sorry, isn't really about how 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 well off you are. It's been almost five years of doing the two job thing, and I've reached a level of burnout I've never experienced before. I work six days a week, sometimes seven, and I have been thinking about quitting my part time job as my BF is moving in, and we, we will be paying half the bills. Yeah, that, that is kind of rough. I really want to get some better work like I balance because my mental health is not good. And you really should. 
Honestly, you, you you've been and doing really well, and you got that, and you, you kind of got the back with this. Um, as far as finances go, I recently confided my mom about the burnout I'm experiencing. It was actually on my birthday last week, and I showed up to my family. A birthday dinner in tears. I had to reschedule my own birthday party because I was caught into the a resto. I don't know what the resto is. I don't really get to see my friends all that much, so I was looking forward to it. I told mom I don't really want my second job anymore as I no longer need the extra income to afford my car, rent, bills, etc. And, I, and I've given up on ownership in the near, near future, at least on my own. She made some pretty nasty comments, such as, You better get used to a life of financial struggle if you want to stay with him. Things of that nature, even though I never brought that up. Yeah, that was really rude. Keep in mind, I was already pretty upset. I thought it was so inappropriate and almost walked out. It was inappropriate. I've always won validation for my parents. And this has, has very much bothered me over the years. I've been going to therapy about my burnout for the past month using the employee assistance program at work. Therapy is now turning into how much pressure I put on myself to do it all due to how I was raised. My boyfriend is fully aware of their opinions of him and still sticks around. His unconditional love means a lot to me. As it, yeah, it's amazing. As my parents' love is very conditional. He has been my rock during this mental health struggle, and it's upsetting, and I don't receive the same support from my parents. It's almost like they're disappointed I can't handle it. I'm not sure how to move forward with my parents. <sighs> I'd have to say... Tell them directly what... Uh, 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 are their feeling and how they make you feel? I mean, that's the step that I would take. But maybe that's just me. Anyway. Whew. I feel like this video was 23 minutes a few minutes ago. Maybe it was 13 and my brain is just not working right. Anyway, my mom is constantly calling me fat. Rude. And really not cool. Ever since Ends Puberty, my mom constantly calls me fat. Fat shaming a teenager? Really? I'm not 19, and I've had three sur surgeries in a year. I've gained 10 t pounds since my first surgery because I can't exercise. I was 140. 140 is not fat! Now I'm 150. Now it's 150. I'm 5'8". Same height as me. My BMI is 22. I don't... I really don't think I'm fat. You aren't! But she constantly been telling me things like, you're really gonna eat that, or don't eat that, or you're gonna gain another five pounds. After my most recent surgery out of country, she kept making comments about me eating a lot. I explained that you need a lot of calories after surgery. I'm a nursing student, so I explained all the macronutrients that you need. We went to a restaurant in America I always wanted to try, that we don't have in Canada. I ordered quite a bit. She said, that's a lot of food. You're gonna get fat. And the waiter scolded her for saying such a thing. Yeah. Because uh, uh, as your mom is uh, horrible. And the waiter didn't even know my situation. My nana was a nurse for 50 years and she backed me up during the week we were in America. But now I'm by myself. 
It's been getting worse. This morning she brought out a weight skill which we ha haven't and had for years because when I was 16, I starved myself. Yeah, probably because your mom kept on on, on, a, on mentally abusing you like this. I've since recovered. When and I was at 16, I had horrible anxiety and I couldn't eat. And if I did, I would throw it up. up. I lost 20 pounds in five weeks. Sometimes I think my mom likes me more when I'm starving myself. Seems to like it. She does the same thing to my older brother, constantly talking about his about food and his weight. He's six foot four and needs a lot of food. I love my mom, but I'm so grateful I'm going back to university soon. I can't live like this anymore. And anytime I bring it up, nothing changes. She never changes. She knows just where to hit me to make it hurt. She knows I'm depressed, and I've been struggling for years, but she doesn't care. Your mother is horrible. She's fat shaming her own child for being at healthy weights. Don't get me wrong, even if you were overweight eight, eight or whatever, this is not, not, not okay. This is cruel. Like, seriously? That's really messed up. As soon as you can, get away from her. Or bring this up. Or try to bring it up in, like, therapy or something. I don't know. Let's see what the comments say. Oh yeah. Next time, try to um. I think these replies are are good. Like it's funny. I don't remember asking for your in input. Or next time, I want to know what you think about my food intake. I'll be sure to ask you. Cause honestly, like this is kind of uh, of abusive, but I'm not sure if I would. I'm not sure if I'd go no contact with this. You're getting some good uh, replies to her, her comments and in, in, in this, so I love uh, of that. Just three more stories. Parents are controlling and threaten to break stuff I paid for. I'm sick of my parents. I'm turning 17 in three. I'm 17, turning 18 in three months. My bad. They're controlling as hell. Recently, I've been over my at my grandparents helping my grandmother go to physical therapy because she got a surgery on something. I brought my PC, which I paid for, over to my grandma's house. Uh, yes, here recently I was in trouble for posting on social media, but it was content, nothing bad or anything, just content on games. It's my dream to be a content creator. Problem is, my parents are so controlling to where I have to even tell them what I'm interested in or want to pursue because I don't want restrictions with content or what I can post. I'm 17. And lets me not forget to mention them threatening to break my PC just because of a game I bought, which is funny because the rating on it is M17+. plus. Yeah, that could be just about any game. It could be a Call of Duty game. It could be Halo for all I know. Either way, not something to get mad at someone for. I got all my stuff taken away for a month. Once a month was over, after or that, I went to help my grandma. I've been over there for a month and helping her early even to go out of town on, on four weeks when my parents decided to pick me up without letting me know. 
saying, I need to come home. I was going to bring my PC, but my mom says, no, leave it. So I ask her, when am I going to get it? And she says, she doesn't know. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I pay for my shit. How are you going to tell me I can't bring something I bought home? Oh, it's controlling as fuck. Now, I'm home and don't know what to do. I honestly want to rebel and say, fuck them. They've controlled me way too much and I'm tired of it. If I rebel, although it will be all hell, I'll pack my stuff and move to my grandma's house. But now I don't know if I can legally do that. Plus, that would cause so much drama. It would be hard to do that. Legally speaking. There are other ways to rebel, but that way is probably not the best way. Update 1. Thanks for already advice. My parents won't let me get my PC from grandma's, which is stupid. We're discussing it tonight, but I expect it to be a, a bullshit. Something like, why didn't I ask to bring my own shit? It's clear they, for some reason, still don't trust me since the whole old social media shit. I'll talk to my grandma about moving in with her. She'll probably feel shocked at me asking because I pretend that everything's fine when it's not. My auntie and brother also live there, which I don't mind, but my aunt also pays the bills. I'm close to both of them, though, so I doubt she'll say no. I'm nervous about asking, but my grandma's kind and says I can ask for anything. It feels wrong, like I'm going behind my parents' back, despite their behavior for the past four months. My grandma's out of town until Friday, so I'll think of what to say. Leaving the PC might be the best option for now. I'll keep you guys updated. Yeah, if he's right, you don't want your PC around someone who, who is trying to break your stuff. Or threatens to break your stuff. Like, ever. Oh yeah, you are, like, almost 18. You're basically an adult now. Anyway, huh? Oh, this one, uh, and that uh, really neat. Maybe I just like it because I love rebellion stories. Oops, the spoiler. I hope it doesn't spoil any of the shows I'm watching. I did not vet this beforehand, by the way, so I don't know if it's going to get really, really bad. I, 25 female, just served to my dad for a second time, and I just realized that while I love him, I'm no longer going to let him treat me like garbage. My dad has always treated me poorly due to many fa factors. I'm agnostic, autistic, and asexual. Everything he hates. He has uh, physically he and verbally abused me and my siblings, but he's always acted like he hated me. I stood up to my, his behavior once, and I did it again. It was over the same exact reason, that he has no respect or love for me. I feel so proud of myself. I'm proud of you too. Yesterday after work, I had called him. He is a popular police officer in a small town in my state. We had to lock down due to somebody calling us and threatening to hurt us. As a result, I called my parents to tell them what was going on. I work for my tribe in a program, and we often get death threats. My dad didn't answer, and I just figured I would call him on the weekend. It was because he was allegedly he went to assault victims, like he always was whenever I called him. Like... I get there are assault victims, but every single time you call him and he doesn't answer, it's always with those types of victims. It could be on his day off if he's with them. But when I called him, he was very aloof, like always. All I ever wanted was my dad to tell him he was proud of me. 
So I usually tell him about my day. I then started talking about the news and how a certain politician got... Hmm. Yeah. Now, my dad is very hard to debate with, and even though I have a degree in political science, which he has always told me that even if I have a fancy agree degree, I was dumber than a rug, he thinks he is improvable, the most righteous and most moral person in every situation. And he was diagnosed as a sociopathic with a narcissist when he was married to my mother. I'm quite sure most people who support or who that certain politician is are. I think I know who OP is talking about in this story, but I'm not going to say their name. I'm not inviting that drama onto, my, onto this channel. But I was just used to being treated like garbage by him. That I just allowed it. So I tried to change the topic. But my dad starts spiraling out and bombarding me. I answer, but I continue to ask that he change the topic. I finally had to hang up on him because he started to insult my intelligence. After I hung up, I told him my reason I hung up and why it made me feel uncomfortable. He tells me that he was citing a reportable citation, which he wasn't. He was just citing off random news sites instead of reading them. And if I had a problem with that, it's my fault and I'm completely in the wrong. I told him that I did not care if he was right. I was talking about how he was treating me and that I was an adult now. It doesn't matter what the subject was. He wasn't. He was going to treat me with a smidge of respect. He told me that Respect goes both ways. I told him, it sure as hell does. And for the longest time, my entire life, it's been going your way only. If you start treating me and my siblings like adults, we won't have to hide things from you. He told me that I was to block him and that he didn't need me in his life. I told him that no. I was not going to block him, but I was his daughter. That I would love him despite how he treated me. He told me not to call him anymore, that I was out of his life, and that I was going to respect him because he's my father. I didn't say anything, but told him that I loved him and that I will be here when he's ready. After an hour, I told my, my stepmother to tell my dad that I love him and that I will be here when he's ready. I am so proud of myself for how I handled that situation. I know he's probably told my sister about his twisted view who only, and I'm probably going to get an uninvited from family events and my dad always using my siblings to punish me and trying to cut them off if I acted out. But I'm super proud that I was able to set reasonable boundaries. Thank you for reading. I just needed to vent before my dad gets my siblings' heads. I know it wasn't eventful, but I just need people to know that I'm super proud of myself. Yeah, of course. Yeah, be sure to stand and firm with your boundaries. He's one of those old people who thinks that respect means obey my authority. And doesn't understand that respect means treat other people like human beings. Now, the last story, if it will load. Mom says she can unlock the door of her 24 year old, old, old child's room and let her, herself in without permission because it's her house. Well, technically, I guess, but no. I think this might be entitled mom, or I'm just a shitty kid. Well, damn. The gaslighting and abuse really hit you hard, didn't it? Whew. I'm 24 years old and a college student. I've worked in a bar for the last two years, and though it's a stable job, I still don't make enough money enough to move out. I've had higher paying jobs. My area is just too expensive and due to having moved to the state with my parents immediately after graduating high school and growing up a military kid, constantly moving and struggling to ever keep contact with friends I did make because of it, 
I had no friends in the area that I could just move in with. And I have too much paranoia to live with strangers. I've just been living with my parents since I finished college. Being out of line because my parents didn't want me having to live in a dorm and be away from them. That's really controlling. Which I should be graduating next year and then hopefully move in with the only person I managed to be close with by then. We live in separate states right now, so it's taking time. Anyways, my parents have always been very weird when it comes to raising me and my older sister. You're telling me. There's a lot of instances. I have plenty of stories, but this one just annoys me and it causes this annoys me most and causes me anxiety. Honestly, I'm gonna say the first first line of this story already told me that you have a lot of um, trauma from your parents. My parents' house is big, but every room except the master or bedroom is pretty small. Oh, should we get little John with galvanized square steel to help help you make your bedroom fit it more stuff? My bedroom can only fit my bed, dresser, and TV stand comfortably. So my desk and computer and bookshelf, and my ferret cage and his my ferret and his big cage are in the bedroom next to mine. That's used as an office for me instead. I'm 24, so obviously I love having some privacy. Especially since I spent most of my life being heavily monitored and coddled by my parents. Specifically my mom, because I was diagnosed with Asperger's at 4. Plus a bunch of other things I can't keep adding up as I see doctors. My sister actually told me she was a bit relieved about how little they ever pay attention to her because they were so focused on me. I'm quite sure there's a little bit of resentment from your sister there. Uh, not towards you, towards your parents. I was coddled so much by my mother that I am no, I am only now learning things like cooking or doing laundry, which she still keeps me from doing because it has to be done this way, not this way. When I ask for help, she gets mad and tells me to figure it out myself. Oh, well, that's just confusing. And by the way, I, I think that nowadays Asperger's is considered to be a part of the autism spectrum of disorder. A specific part of it. Anyway, and I can tell you right now that is confusing and really contradictory. I was raveling. Anyways, reveling on this to say, our mom still have her and overwhelms me with how on top of me she is. But the worst of it is probably the fact that she will let herself into my bedroom or office whenever she wants. Most of the time without announcement. Reminder, I'm an adult. I'm also AFAB, and again, an adult. Though my parents and some believe I do things like that because I'm their baby who never seems interested and acts disgusted. But I act that way to keep my dad from making jokes and comments about me. You. Uh, you have a gross file of that too, then. So besides existing, I also do adult things in my private time. Obviously, I lock the door, but does that stop her? Absolutely not. So even if I'm in my office playing video games, I'll keep one end of the headphones off at all times so I can listen out for her moving around nearby. I don't have anything to hide, but my anxiety will go through the roof. Besides that, because of my dad, I hate anyone coming up or sneaking up behind me without how my knowing. And she insists on my computer facing the door so that so my back is to the door. So I lock my door to prevent people doing that. Like any human being, I also lock my door when I'm changing in my bedroom. And uh, what does my mom do? She finds my door is locked, unlocks it, and lets herself in. There was this one time for... For example, when I was in my bedroom, in the middle of changing, I am literally completely topless, hits to the wind when I hear her approach my door. All I hear suddenly is the sound of my doorknob of the lock switch being switched from the outside, and then the door being twisted open. And 
And what did I do? I body slammed the door shut and nearly heard her doing it. I don't know what it is, but even if it's my mom, who insists on bathing me until I was nearly 14, holy crap. Cut the umbilical cord, lady. The thought of anyone seeing me in any state of undress, even if it's just in my underwear, feels disgusting and makes me panicky. So I'm not joking when I say I was hyperventilating when I slammed into the door to shut it and was quickly trying to dress. While I'm doing that, my mom is shoving in into the door trying to force it open, yelling to let her in and that she wanted to tell me to do something. I told her no, and that I'm changing and she can't come in. She gave up getting in, mostly because I'm a fairly strong person despite never working out. Unless you count picking up tables and kegs at work for fun exercise. I just like picking up heavy things to see if I can. <laughs> When I finally let her in after changing, she's huffing and mad with me, demanding to know why I wouldn't let her in. I mean, is changing not enough of a reason for you, lady? Come on. That's just rude. I repeated that I was changing, and she said, So, I'm your mother. I made that ass so I can look at it. That's gross. I ignored that and said my door was locked and that she shouldn't be letting herself in and unlocking my door. She responds with, I can do what I want. It's my house. If I want in your room, then I'll come into your room. I can unlock your door if I want. What if there was an emergency? What if you were dying? What if I was dying? Okay, you're kind of overreacting. I think you'd know. I, said, I don't care. I'm an adult. This is my private space. You do not just let yourself in whenever you want. I don't disrespect you and let myself in into your room and unlock your door. Don't do it to me. She just got mad and ran off, forgetting what she was going to tell me to do. It probably wasn't and anything important. I mean, honestly, I think your mother is a little bit suspicious here. Anyway, Oh wow, looks like the ads are what makes this such a long post. Anyway, edit. Thank you for all the replies, giving advice and reassuring me. I will look into a door stopper. I just worry about her reaction since just a few years ago a bad experience with my dad and locked doors of me sobbing and a panic attack on a bathroom floor while he pounded the door until I nearly broke, calling me a lot of things so I got a lot of anxiety about my parents' reaction and to being unable to get to me. Yeah, I'll definitely try to get a Stop her when I get paid next. Okay. Remember when and I said that OP sound like they had a lot of abuse from their, their parents? That's what I mean. I'm making this ad to answer er, and add some things I, and I guess might need to be mentioned. One, I don't pay rent. They want me to and were going to have me start last year until my insurance skyrocketed and so it's been hard for me to keep any money saved up. Two, it may be some time before I can and fully move out due to money and the situation with my best friend. But I've been planning to pursue my masters after I finish my bachelor's. At school less than an hour away, and that's close to my work and requires freshmen to live on campus. The original plan was getting an internship out of state for a month or so to get practice on being more independent. 
But I didn't get accepted to my choices, so I'm relying on pursuing a master's now for a good excuse for them to allow me to live away from them. Yet, yeah, why are they not? Three, I'm not a legal dependent. Back in 2018, a month before my 18th birthday, and right after I graduated at high school, my parents insisted that we get me an attorney and open a case to make me their dependent. Oh, you went through your senior year as a 17 year old too. I didn't want to. I knew it meant I'd have, have to stay forever and that I'd be stuck at home. I said I didn't want to do that, but they insisted it was for my own good and to help me. When we met my attorney, they didn't, they didn't allow me to get a work written for the first 30 minutes with him. He made them wait in the other room so he could be able to speak with me. And I told him I didn't want this. He asked me, asked about me, lots of questions. And finally, when hearing, when the hearing occurred, my mother broke down sobbing and telling everyone in the room that I needed it, that I was going to die in a ditch somewhere. Her exact words, and that just, uh, they just wanted to help me. The attempt to make me independent was denied, as my attorney found me perfectly capable and happily wanting to be independent, and thought it unnecessary to make me into a dependent. Four, my sister and I used to speak of me living with her but because of a medical situation with my nephew and other family situations going on. My uncle's living with her and my brother in law uh, to help with the kids and house. Five, after it being so long, I'm not sure the full name and contact of my old, old therapist anymore, only a last name. I don't even know the address of her office and my parents didn't allow me to learn how to drive until I was 22. Damn. I don't know how to drive yet, not because my parents wouldn't allow me, but because I haven't, and I just decided not to yet. I may try to speak with our doctor about referrals, as I know the address at least. I'm just hoping I can find a day off or find an in-person therapist as I tried digital and was getting nowhere with the lack of privacy to speak with someone. Six, my bank account is heavily monitored by my, my mother, and she sees everything I do with it. I've been looking into opening a private account. I just worry about a new card coming in since she goes through all of our mail and I work often. Yeah, that's the worst part. Add to, sorry, another edit, but I forgot to add some things that I think I mentioned in the comments, but forgot to add since I was going to work. Warning, because I do mention an offing self. There have been many occasions where when I'll get especially stressed from being busy with work and school and then pouted, my parents have insisted I just quit my job and focus on school, and they'll take care of me and my bills. I could just stay home and do school. They stopped recently only because I told them to their faces that if I had to be home and not work, I'd go crazy like that and kill myself. Dramatic? Yes, incredibly so. But it's true. Some of the hardest times of my depression were when I was out of a job and trapped at home constantly. Turns out it's probably a mixture of depression and bipolar. We didn't find out I was bipolar until last year when I first spoke with our most recent doctor. And I did attempt but failed. Not that they noticed, just thought I was acting tired and told me to lay down. Somewhat minor thing. These are not minor things. Oh my god. I think. But when I drive to places, I have to let my mom know where I'm going. And if she says no, then I can't go. Same with trips. And she makes sure I'm going where I, I said by tracking me. Oh my god. The one time I turned it off, she called me freaking out. She's calling you while she knows you're driving. You have the worst mom. You know what? A lot of these comments are probably going to say things... That I will have to agree with. 
because they're true and they're probably he said better than I could. So let's go with this first one. This first one is apparently the best. Um, I understand you're autistic, so am I. So I'm going to be explicit and direct. I apologize if this hurts you, but I think you need to know. Your mother is a narcissistic parent who has infantilized you. Some things you have said regarding your mother having bathed with you until you were 14. That is completely inappropriate and very harmful for you. Can I recommend joining this up raised by narcissists? There are a lot of people on there whose stories are so similar to yours. Good news is no, you wanting autonomy and privacy is completely natural. And there is hope and a way out and heal from this. Big hugs. Also definitely buy yourself some um, door wedges and take care and take them um, with you whenever you leave the house so she can't destroy or throw them out on you. You can get them cheap from a dollar store. I actually enjoy people being explicit and direct. It's very comforting. First time plan living in with eventually has been close with me for eight years now. The only person I've managed to be this close with ever in my life. And it took them talking to me about things to realize how messed up certain parts of my childhood were and how my parents act. But I still have an impossible time telling what is or isn't normal or appropriate behavior. Especially since a lot of my coworkers who I talk about in instances like this would tell me I'm being rude and disrespectful since it's not my home and I live there rent free. Because my insurance and car payments are too expensive and like too low for my parents to have me pay rent. It really is a struggle trying to distinguish between normal and poor behavior at this point. I'm not sure what's normal anymore. I can tell you that your parents are definitely not normal. God damn. Todd told you that OP was being abused by other narcissistic parents. <sighs> I could tell from the first line, which is a really sad part. Anyway. My god. That was an hour of r slash entitled parents. If you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, so until then, goodbye!